Care Collab update time for Dori Dernops' Sogo Vivian. Mine is F858, and that would be the flask number that it came out of. Today, joining me is Simply Orchids, Trisha's Orchid Life, Hillbilly Orchids, and Orchids at Home. In the past year, we've kind of been documenting our Doria Ternopsis Sogo Vivian via these care collabs. So thank you very much for your interest and watching my video to see how mine is getting on. I am glad to say she is still with me. Usually when I have issues with Phalaenopsis type orchids, because of scale, it doesn't take very long for the rest of the orchid to collapse. There we go, scale. This little one, without me noticing, started to get a scale infestation, which then only shows itself to my naked eye very, very late in the process of the scale, having a great time at the base between the leaf joints. And all of a sudden, my lower leaves start to yellow from the inside out which in the past always had me thinking I have stem rot. Knowing how cautious I am about the misting to maintain my humidity levels around the outer edge of the pot, I've always questioned myself and wondered how on earth is water getting into that area to cause the demise of my Phalaenopsis type orchids. But then when I take them apart to check what is going on, it turns out that I find traces of scale, if not the little bleeps, right there on the stem. But here she is. She's looking a little bit mangled, but she has managed to at least develop another leaf that was starting to grow when I cleaned her up. I treated her for scale and repotted her into fresh media. That was in the Care Collab prior to this one, which I will link in the description below. And then she's also put out this little leaf here, which you can see is a little bit mangled and that is to be expected. You can also see maybe a little bit of a dot in there. So I am still treating her for scale because it's not done and dusted just because she had a radical cleanup. She's alive. That is all I can say. That is more than I can say for what other Phalaenopsis type orchids had to deal with in my history. But in my experience, Doria Ternopsis are not happy root growers. When they develop a root, then it takes a long time for that root to actually extend and grow. And I put that down to my very low humidity levels here in southern Spain. And for that reason, I opt for Lekka and self-watering for about 90% of my collection. And still, I don't have enough humidity around the base. And that is why I have these little microfibers spread around the surface, even now in winter. Because as a root grows, <laughs> and to me they are precious, especially on a Doriteanopsis, that root cannot desiccate. It has to go into the media for any chance of survival of this kind of orchid. And I'm hoping that I'm being successful at that. It is a fine, fine balance, especially now during the colder months of the year, of keeping humidity levels up, but not encroaching in upon the stem. And well, what do you know? My little Doria Teanopsis wants to bloom. <laughs> I'm very happy to see a spike, but I'm not happy that I'm gonna have to cut it off. Now the spikes develop normally over a course of two months, maybe three months before they start to bud out and bloom. So I have another two months at least of this spike to go before I cut it off. My plans are to trick the orchid to think that she is going to bloom so she doesn't send out another spike if I were to cut this spike off at this point in time. It is exuding a lot of energy, it wants to bloom, and all the focus right now is getting that spike to grow. And that's the focus of its attention at this point in time. I am loath that it is doing it. So it puts me in a bit of a conundrum. I want to maintain and reserve the energies of this orchid so that it doesn't collapse on me, but I will also be faced with the decision to cut that spike once I see the buds separating themselves from the stem. This way, all the hormones have already signaled the orchid that she is going to bloom. And by the time I cut that spike off, it'll be too late for any other hormones to recognize that she hasn't bloomed. And then she won't send out a secondary spike just because she is insisting on blooming. 
I am trying to conserve the energy of this orchid to the best of my ability. Unfortunately, right now, she is going to be focusing her energy reserves on growing a spike, but eventually that spike is coming off. The status right now of my orchid is she's not thriving, but she isn't dead either. That gives me a lot, a lot of hope and I feel encouraged that she will be okay. And I say that tentatively because we still have another huh, eight, maybe 12 weeks to go of fluctuating temperatures in my climate that she absolutely does not prefer. So my nighttime temperatures at this point in time in the grow space where she lives goes down to 15 degrees Celsius as a minimum and then only up to maybe 19, 20 degrees Celsius as a maximum. This is the brightest light that she has seen in months. So she has a lot of light, but never ever direct sun. And it is considered in my environment, bright shade. Airflow is paramount. And right now I am also treating every week, painting the base with garlic alcohol to avoid any reoccurring little scale babies. I have not seen them for months, but I am now a little bit paranoid because I thought I was over the issue of scale and I thought we were done and dusted in my collection when it came to Phalaenopsis type orchids. And then this one came along and said, wrong, I've got scale. The fertilizer levels at this point in time are only supplements. I am hardly applying any fertilizer with nitrogen in it because I really don't want to encourage her to grow any of that spike. I would prefer the spike just to deteriorate all by itself. So I've got a lot of seaweed in there and I have a lot of calcium and magnesium. When I say a lot, I mean 60 ppm of calcium magnesium, 40 ppm of seaweed at 6.3 pH because all she gets is a soak. Whenever I feel that my microfibers at the bottom are starting to dry out a little bit, they're sort of on the drier side of damp. That is when I give her a full soak of the mask at 6.3, a blitz nutrient uptake opportunity, so to speak. And then I drain the pot and just leave a little bit of the water in the reservoir. Not much, but a little bit because in my memory, those roots in the pot aren't very long. Roots of Doria Teranopsis don't grow very fast. So I am not expecting any roots to actually be at the bottom of the inside pot that would affect any water. So in order to maintain a higher humidity, she does have a residue of water in the base. And then again, microfibers approach to damp, but on the dry side and the soak continues. My hope is that with her steady indoor temperatures, even though they are a little bit lower, the slow metabolism that this orchid has this time of year, I can still encourage the roots to grow. Of course, right now, while she's developing her spike, her focus is not on roots, which is really bothersome. So for the next eight weeks, I'm going to be watching this orchid, but the moment the buds separate from that spike, it is coming off. But I'm also very, very pleased to still have this orchid in my collection, considering what I saw earlier this year. My heart just sank and I just said, I know these symptoms, I know what's coming next. And I know that Doritanopsis, they are very, very stingy on the root growth. So this, even though she looks mangled and gnarled, I'm liking this a lot. <laughs> that is my quick update of my Doritanopsis Sogo Vivian. Thank you so much to Trisha's Orchid Life for giving me a timely heads up that hers is coming into bloom. So at least, at least this care collab, we are going to be able to admire some blooms in this edition, so head over to Trisha's Orchid Life. Sogo Vivian is in bloom. I have no idea about the status of Simply Orchids, neither of Hillbilly Orchids or Orchids at Home. Their links will be in my description below though. Please go over and have a look-see at what these gorgeous blooms look like on other channels. Your time here watching my video is very much appreciated. Thank you so very, very much for dropping in. If you have any questions with regards to something that I mentioned throughout this video, use the comments below to address those and I'll be very happy to elaborate in more detail. Have yourselves a beautiful day on one condition that you please stay safe and take care. Bye. <music>